Today, we're going to talk about the 12 simple and very powerful home remedies that will not only help you prevent hair loss, but also help you regrow the hair back. You know, losing your hair is a devastating experience and you want to try natural things first before you try medication simply because there are side effects. So I'm going to show you 12 very effective, very cool things that you can do that are pretty cheap. They don't cost you much money. So get a piece of paper out and write these things down. Now, the first two things I want to talk about, very important, very significant, but very few people um, are aware of this. So if you think about what the hair is exposed to on a regular basis, well, you take a shower and you're exposing your hair to the water. Did you know that the fluoride in your water creates significant hair loss as well as acne in your skin? Yes, this is true. The fluoride, the fluoride that is supposed to be good for our teeth actually destroys our hair. So the first piece of advice I'm going to give you is just stop taking a shower. I'm just kidding. What you really want to do is just get a simple shower head that filters out fluoride. Okay. I found a good one. I'll put the link down below. Now I'm not an affiliate or I don't get any kickbacks from this company, but it's a pretty good shower head that will filter out fluoride. Now that right there could be the reason why you're losing hair. In fact, fluoride also blocks your thyroid and a hypothyroid condition can very easily stop your hair growth. All right, the next thing you need to know about is your shampoo, sulfates. Sulfates destroy protein and your hair is made up of 91% protein. So if you're exposing your hair to sulfate shampoos on a daily basis, you're literally creating all sorts of problems and inhibiting hair loss. So you really wanna make sure you get a sulfate-free shampoo. All right, those are the two things that you just need to avoid. Now, to understand hair loss, let's first look at the mechanism, how most top hair loss medications work. They basically block an enzyme to inhibit DHT, which is a powerful form of testosterone that tends to burn out the hair follicles. So testosterone turns into DHT, a very powerful form of testosterone through this little enzyme. And so these drugs inhibit that enzyme. The enzyme is called 5-alpha reductase. And people that have too much DHT get this condition called androgenetic alopecia, which is pattern hair loss, both in males and females. All right. So now the question is, are there natural things that can inhibit this enzyme? Because of course, the drugs have side effects. And the answer is yes. So there's a couple things you can do. Uh, onion juice, which I put a video out on this one topic, is a potent natural inhibitor of that enzyme. So you dilute it in water, okay, like a 50-50 ratio, rub it into your scalp and let it set for 15 minutes. And then you would wash out your hair. I put a link down below the video that I did on this topic. All right, green tea, same thing. You would make some green tea, Dilute it by 50%, rub it into your scalp for about 15 minutes, then wash it out with shampoo. Now, the next um, potent inhibitor of this enzyme is rosemary oil. There's one study that I found that showed that this oil is comparable to Rogaine as far as the effectiveness for preventing hair loss. And so you would take rosemary oil, rub it into the scalp, and leave it on for about 10 to 15 minutes. And you would actually leave it in overnight. And then in the morning, take a shower, shampoo your hair. So rosemary oil is a potent inhibitor of 5-alpha reductase. Now, another inhibitor of this enzyme is just zinc, okay? Maybe you're deficient in zinc, like a lot of people are. So the best food for zinc is oysters. Start consuming some oysters a few times a week. But zinc is also in red meat, so you might need some more red meat. It's also in seafood, it's also in eggs, but red meat and oysters have the most zinc. Okay, now we have five. The old-fashioned home remedy, apple cider vinegar. You don't want to put concentrated apple cider vinegar on your scalp. Okay, I'm just letting you know right now, it's going to burn your scalp. You want to dilute it, like one-third cup of apple cider vinegar to one liter of water. And you can rub it into the scalp and it actually will help clean up some of the pores that may be filled with sebum, which is an oil 
that can be preventing the follicles from growing properly. And also apple cider vinegar gives a really nice shine to your hair. In addition to that, apple cider vinegar is acidic and so is your scalp. So apple cider vinegar can help reestablish the pH of your skull, which can actually support the friendly microbes or the microbiome in your scalp. You don't want to create an environment where you, the outside of your skin is so sterile because you have millions of microorganisms living on the outside of your skin, helping you. And when you sterilize or clean your skin too much, you can end up with all sorts of problems, including hair loss. So this is why you want to minimize the amount of chemicals that you expose your skin to. Let's go to number six. What if you go on the ketogenic diet and you start losing hair? What does that usually indicate? That usually means that you're not consuming enough protein. That's the number one cause. So increase your protein, okay? There's some other things you want to look at as well. Number one, trace minerals, especially if you are doing intermittent fasting or fasting with your ketogenic plan because we are very, very deficient in trace minerals in our food. Trace minerals are minerals needed in very small amounts, but they're very, very essential. So either consuming food high in trace minerals like sea kelp or shellfish or fish from the ocean and sea salt is a good one, or just get a plant-based trace mineral product will add more trace minerals to give the hair what it needs to build. All right, the other key vitamins that are needed in larger amounts when you're on the ketogenic plan are the B vitamins. And so there are a lot of links between a B vitamin deficiency and hair loss. So you wanna make sure you're taking enough B vitamins. And so nutritional yeast is a really good remedy for that. Just make sure that when you're doing nutritional yeast, that you wanna get it unfortified with synthetic vitamins. All right, number seven, cruciferous vegetables. If you have too much estrogen, that can affect your hair. This is why women, when they go through their menstrual cycle, tend to lose hair. This is an excess amount of estrogen. And so one of the natural uh, ways to help regulate estrogen uh, is to start consuming cruciferous vegetables. Another great way to regulate estrogen would be to take sea kelp because when you take sea kelp, you get more iodine and iodine also regulates estrogen. Now, one more side note on that. Let's say you're menopausal and you start losing your hair. That usually is higher levels of cortisol related to stress. And if that's your situation, I put a link down below on cortisol, because that's a very, very important topic. Let's talk about number eight, selenium. Next home remedy would be something to support a hypothyroid condition. If you have a slow thyroid, a lot of times you'll lose hair. And one of the key trace minerals for the thyroid to support it and help convert T4 to T3 is selenium. And the best food for selenium is Brazil nuts and seafood and seaweed or sea kelp. Now, if you do sea kelp, you also get the iodine that's also good for your thyroid. And one note about that, um, you can have a hypothyroid condition from other reasons that are not related to selenium. For example, you can have high estrogen. Too much estrogen inhibits the thyroid function. You could have a fatty liver or liver damage. That can stop your T4 from converting to T3. You could have gut damage from antibiotics, from eating the wrong foods, especially gluten. I would say out of all the foods that is damaging to the thyroid, it would be grains, specifically the gluten in the grains, okay? So if you have Hashimoto's, which is usually 90% of all hypothyroid cases, you definitely need to avoid gluten like the plague because that will keep the thyroid inflamed and you're gonna have a difficult time um, fixing that problem. Then we have nine, increase your vitamin D. You wanna get more sleep and you wanna start exercising to reduce stress. Stress is a huge uh, problem with your hair. In fact, a lot of people, if you ask them, when did you lose your hair? After an emotional stressful event because you're spiking cortisol and cortisol is very damaging to proteins. Now, a couple things you can do if this is your situation. Start taking more vitamin D. In fact, you just need to be out in the sun more if you can do that. Now, if it's winter, it's gonna be a hard time, but 
more vitamin D can greatly, greatly help your hair and lower your stress. Vitamin D3 can act like a natural cortisol hormone, but without the side effects. It does very similar things. It's an anti-inflammatory. So to reduce stress, you wanna increase your vitamin D and or expose yourself to sun. You wanna get more sleep. I have a ton of videos on that if you're new to my channel. You wanna start doing daily walks and you wanna start exercising to reduce stress. All right, number 10. In a lot of hair formulas, they add silica. Okay, silica gives the hair its strength. And most spring water has silica, like Pellegrino, and even most other types of bottled water where it comes from a spring is going to have silica. You can even buy silica-rich water, which is really good for the hair. In fact, you're probably gonna notice that your skin, your hair, and your nails will all just start growing and become very strong if you start consuming silica. All right, 11, the ketogenic diet, as well as doing intermittent fasting. If you are female and you have polycystic ovarian syndrome, you have to realize that one of the big side effects is hair loss because you have this spike of androgens and that's coming from insulin. So just by understanding that simple relationship and lowering the amount of insulin, you can help lower androgens and help prevent hair loss. So how does that happen? Well, start going on a low carb diet. That's called the ketogenic diet, as well as doing intermittent fasting. And lastly, 12. If you look at a lot of remedies for hair loss supplements, they always add biotin. Now, what's this biotin? Biotin helps proteins in your body, especially hair. Biotin will help regrow your hair and prevent the loss of hair. But biotin is a very key B vitamin for the manufacturing of these proteins that give the hair its structure. And biotin is made by bacteria, okay? So your own gut makes biotin. And so many people, after they lose the gut microbiome, start losing their hair because they don't have the microbes to make biotin anymore. So take a wild guess what food is loaded with biotin and can increase your own friendly bacteria to make your own biotin. Sauerkraut. Sauerkraut has a hundred times more probiotics than most probiotics. And the good bacteria in sauerkraut survives the acid in your stomach. Plus it gives you massive amounts of vitamin C, which is also needed to help grow proteins specifically collagen and keratin. So sauerkraut on a regular basis can greatly help you reestablish your microbiome in your gut, help give you vitamin C and give you more biotin. Now, if you have a receding hairline, I did a very specific, important video on that topic, and I put it right here. Check it out.